Okay, let's take a look at the Code of Hammurabi and our explanation of Mesopotamia as one of our early civilizations. All right, Hammurabi was, in fact, a priest king. What we know is that he lived sometime between about 1792 and 1750 BC. So that's almost 4,000 years ago, it's a pretty long time ago. Now, he united all of Mesopotamia under his 43-year reign of Babylon. So he was the king of Babylon, and under his rulership, Babylon had conquered a very large section of what we would today call Mesopotamia. All right, so let's take a look at this. The most famous thing that um, people consider uh, a contribution from Babylonian society that would have come from Hammurabi is his code, the Code of Hammurabi. And this is actually a picture of the code on the right here. And this is what we know about the code. It had 282 laws that regulated economic, social, and moral affairs. So the Code of Hammurabi is essentially a legal code. In this case, it's carved on a stone stele. A stele is a big stone sort of tablet. Uh, basically placed in the middle of the city where everybody would be able to read. In fact, this image at the top of the stele is considered to be one of the only images of Hammurabi that may exist. Now, these laws were important because they distinguished between major and minor crimes. So it listed, again, you know, major crimes, everything from, say, let's say murder, to minor crimes, theft. Okay, in this case, though, the punishment would often fit the crime. So this is an interesting thing. That the punishments that people are metered out are the types of punishments that would be appropriate for the type of crime that may have been being committed. Okay, so again, they were carved on stone tablets and they were placed for where everybody could see them. Now, that's important because basically it means that you couldn't use ignorance of the law as an excuse. Even if you couldn't read, it, essentially this tablet would be placed where everybody would have seen it and if you couldn't read it, at some point, somebody probably read it out loud to everybody around. So ignorance of the law could not be used as an excuse to basically violate the law. All right, so why is this important for us? Because this serves as a foundation for future codes of law. As we'll see, the type of law code that Hammurabi used was sort of harsh, but it is the first written code of law Hence, it's the, the, the great-grandfather of all legal systems that come later. And in this course, we're going to take a look at different legal systems when we look at places like ancient Rome, uh, the Greeks, for that matter. Also, uh, we're going to be looking at ancient India uh, and then the Byzantine Empire. And we're going to see how different societies impose different rules of law. So it's important that we go back to the first law code. In this case, it's almost 4,000 years old. Code of Hammurabi is the law code. Let's take a look at some examples. These will be some of the ones that we sort of cover in class as well. Uh, here's the first one that most people are familiar with. If a man destroy the eye of another man, they shall destroy his eye. So most of us know this from the Bible as an eye for an eye. Here's the next one. And this one says, if a man knock out a tooth of a man of his own rank, they shall knock out his tooth. So eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. So that's the example of the punishment fitting the crime. You knock somebody's eye out, you get your eye knocked out. But notice that in this one here, there's something different. It mentions rank. And that concept of rank would suggest that not everybody in the society is of the same rank. And so some of the laws, in fact, will distinguish between different people of different ranks. So it may be a fair law in terms of its you know, punishment fitting the crime, but it may not have been meted out as fairly to different people depending on their social status or their social rank in their society. Now, let's take a look at one more. This one is, as if a man breaks a man's bone, they shall break his. Now this is something I want you to think about as well, the term man. What does the word man mean? Is it the same as rank? Is it the same as gender? The idea here is that maybe, you know, when we look at many of these laws, they don't have the word woman in them. That doesn't mean that women didn't have rights, but man may be a distinction of rank, not necessarily a distinction of gender. All right, and the last one we'll take a quick look at is if a son strikes his father, they shall cut off his fingers. Yikes. Uh, that's kind of scary, but essentially... Um, it would seem to suggest that maybe not too many kids were striking their fathers, um, or it seems to suggest that the society valued very much so that young people respect their elders. So there's different ways that you can look at some of these laws. And these are just four examples, but there's many other ones that we could look at, and we'll look at more of them in class as well.